Hi, and welcome to episode 17 of Urban Legends, the Southern God of War 20 story time. We're now up to story number two of the classic Dog Tales chapter, The Swiss Charred Poodles. What can you believe? Our recent stories on fabulous fables and legends of our time and our town drew such a thunderous lack of response that we have decided to exceed, uh, accede to popular request and drop dead with yet another will the last one to leave turn off the presses? Actually, what inspired me to fly in the face of such an unanimous opposition was the surfacing of the Chinese poodle story on the front page of my very own beloved newspaper, The Chronicle. If memory serves, like all deathless fables, the Chinese poodle is on a ten-year cycle, so I guess it was due again. I printed it first in 39, with a Chinatown setting. I heard it again in 49, from New York, and in 59 occurred in Honolulu. This time, a couple of years overdue, 1971, it was circulated by the Reuters news agency from Zurich via Hong Kong and goes, Hans and Erna W, who asked the Zurich newspaper, Blick, not to publish their full names, said they took Rosa to a restaurant and asked the waiter to give her something to eat. The waiter had trouble understanding the couple but eventually picked up the dog and carried her to the kitchen where they thought she would be fed. Eventually the waiter returned carrying a dish. When the couple removed the silver lid, they found Rosa. When you first read that, you immediately smelled a rat. Or at least a roast poodle, right? The tip off is that Hans and Erna W didn't want their names published. The telltale sign of your true fable. People involved in these fabrications never want their names published. Among the rat smellers, when the Roast Rosa story broke, was SF's Robert Reynolds, US representative for the Hong Kong Tourist Association. The story has so many holes in it, we didn't even bother to issue a denial, he says. First of all, that alleged Swiss couple couldn't have been tourists because pets are quarantined for six months before they're allowed to get before they're allowed into Hong Kong. And in the second place, pets are forbidden in Hong Kong restaurants, just as they are here. However, I should add that the Roast Rosa a la Rosa fable endangered some lively dialogue that day at Harvey Wallbangers pub in Sansom. Now there's the original Chinese Doggy Diner and Jack Gaia, published, uh, publicist for the LA Rams. Nope, disagreed. P.K. Macca. It's Chow Mein. You're both wrong, decided Pat Short, owner of Warbangers. It's a Swiss char poodle. From Herb Kahn's, or Herb Kane's column in the San Francisco Chronicle, September 12, 1971, Kane captured Perfectly the typical discussion of the dog's dinner legend. 
although of course he may have invented all or part of his report, quoting one's cronies in a bar is a traditional device used by newspaper columnists. The actual news item, can, uh, can quoted, was circulated by Reuters, a frequent source of doubtful stories. Their report claimed that Rosa had been served garnished with pepper sauce and bamboo shoots. In other versions of the story, the couple finish their multi-course meal, then ask about the dog and are told, Dog was dish number eight. Or they recognize the dog's collar on the serving dish. Sometimes a horrified couple drop dead on the spot. More often they sue the restaurant. The legend is told among the deaf community as an illustration of how sign language may be misunderstood by hearing people. When the legend was alluded in the comic strip Zippy in 1990, the weird clown for whom the strip is titled said the incident happened in Bangkok. But he is told that it's an odd urban myth. It didn't really happen. Zippy laments, one by one, all my child illusions are shattered. childhood illusions and that was the swiss child poodle join me in the next episode as i read not my dog until then bye